Welcome back to Undulations. So I was working on a video about the castle drum and a couple of thoughts about the micro freak came up that I'd like to share. So it's gonna be like we never left. Now, the first of the two thoughts was about the vocoder on the micro freak and Gotta say, not really that happy with how the results turned out. So that's something that I'll mention at the end of the video, a little bit more of a thing not to try. But the second thought was motivated by sort of thinking about the modulation sources that we have on the microfreak. We've got pressure, we've got the uh, keys themselves, we've got the regular envelope, the cycling envelope, the low frequency oscillator, a lot of things that can modulate the parameters on the microfreak, but what I found myself wanting was just a knob. And the thing that really motivated this was wanting to be able to control a modulation point by a knob. So think about something like the LFO to one of the synthesis parameters, and you've either got to have that set all the way according to the mod matrix or go into the mod matrix and set it or have some other modulation thing control it. But I want something simple, not an envelope to control it, just a knob. And so if you're familiar with something like the Novation circuit where you can program the knobs on that, or uh, even using a DAW like Ableton Live, which has macros and macro knobs, uh, there's a case of being able to sort of fan out where that you can control multiple parameters on the synthesizer at the same time and it's a highly desirable form of control. Now, there isn't one on the microfreak, but there's a way that you can sort of approximate it with the cycling envelope, the amount knob of the cycling envelope. And we'll get into the details of how to do that in just a second. Now, is it a perfect setup? No, because for one thing, you get rid of the usage of the cycling envelope to do this sort of stuff, and then there's also a little bit of a tiny glitch to it because of some timing that we'll see in the very first thing that I do. So I want to run through some patches that use this macro knob concept. And uh, I'll probably uh, go into detail on a couple of them, one at the beginning, one at the end, and then the rest of them will just fly through and I'll put all the parameters for all of it in the description. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I think the easiest way to start is with a simple example, and I'm going to make sort of a drone or theremin preset. And uh, to do that, let me go, uh, we're in the init patch right now, so I'm going to go to the 2-op FM, go to somewhere like 50 for the ratio, um, down fairly low, like 10 for the amount and then up around 30 for the feedback. So that sounds like this. And I want to start using the slow reverb as an effect on all of this because I think it just sort of makes it all sound better. So now we've got this. And next thing I'm going to do is change some of the envelope settings, go into some detail on why in a sec, but sort of 20s, 20 milliseconds for the attack and uh, similarly low, under 100 milliseconds for the release, and uh, it's a little harder set precisely, and then 100% on the sustain, so we've got a pretty uh, choppy envelope, like that, and uh, then we're just going to go straight in and set a mod matrix value between the cycling envelope and the pitch and I'm going to set that exactly to 50 and the key thing here is that every 25 units for this setting corresponds to an octave so this is going to be a two octave shift that we're going to get and with a max of four octaves if you set it at 100 all right so now that sounds really wild just like this and we're used to thinking of the cycling envelope as a dynamic thing like that, but I'm gonna, sort of the closest thing I can think of is uh, in modular, I'm 
trying to use the cycling envelope as a constant voltage. So sort of a constant signal to other targets in the mod matrix. And uh, to start with, we'll come back to the run mode and the loop mode, but to start with, for this specific preset, I want to use the envelope setting. And I'm going to set the rise time very short to zero. And I'm going to set the fall time very long and set the uh, sustain for the cycling envelope to be 100%. So we've got something that just shoots up as fast as it can, stays constant, and then has a very long decay. All right, now what will that do? I've got the amount knob at zero now, and if I press a key, it's going to sound just like it normally would. But then I'm going to have control over that pitch with the amount knob up to two octaves higher. And so to clarify some of the settings that I made, I'm trying to get the amplitude envelope to sort of come in gradually and have the cycling envelope uh, pitch change come in fast so that by the time you can hear the note it's already at the right pitch and by the time the note goes away it stays at the right pitch and so you don't get any pops or drifts of the pitch in that case. Now you might think well I could uh, just do some of these things with the pitch bend strip. That's true. But you can set this to bend to a bigger range, and uh, you can also leave it wherever you want. So if you have a specific pitch, you can just set it there. And that's something that could be handy either musically or in sort of just a practical sense, where the, maybe you don't set this range to be two octaves. Maybe you just set it to be one semitone and you use this knob to tune the microfreak on the fly to, so that maybe it uh, meshes well with your modular setup or something like that. And there are a lot of different applications for this sort of thing. It doesn't just have to be single notes. It could also be chords, and you can use the hold button. You could also uh, do it with an arpeggio. Now, I think I mentioned that there was a problem with this setup. If you use the envelope setting like I am, it's great for drones or theremin or whatever. But if you want to have any type of release on your note, then it uh, presents a problem. It sounds like this. You can hear that pitch change. And if you have this uh, cycling envelope set even lower, then you'll hear just a, a pop. And so one way to prevent that is going to be using either run or loop. And uh, I tend to go with loop, but there might be some advantages to run. Uh, here, we'll change this up. So this is what I think of really as the macro mode on the microfreak. So if I talk about macro mode on the cycling envelope, it's this, which is a very low rise time, zero, low fall time, zero, and then maximum hold time, 10 seconds. So that just means that the cycling envelope is going to try and hold its peak value, its max value for 10 seconds, and then it has a little blip as it falls and rises back up. And uh, if it were perfect, then this would just be a smooth function. But uh, it turns out that there's a little bit of a glitch to it. And if you listen, it sounds like this. I'm gonna turn it back down to like three seconds so that you can hear it. You can hear that pop. And I tell you, with a reverb on, it's pretty extreme. Okay, so 
what do we do? We uh, set that to 10 seconds. This is on loop mode, so it re-triggers every time that you hit a note. And that just basically means that now I can play notes. with any type of release at any pitch. Now, I don't want to dwell anymore on the problem of it because honestly, when you're not just straight listening to the pitch and a big pitch shift at that, then you don't really tend to hear any sort of glitch at all. And so we're going to use it, uh, the cycling envelope to control other things. And so that's what the next few presets that I'm just going to uh, go through real quickly are going to be talking about. All right, so next thing I wanna do is just run through some presets. The details for these are in the description, but it'll, it'll kind of give a little bit more about how I feel like this uh, macro knob can be used. And uh, I think there's plenty that can be done with it. To start with, I'm gonna do a few where that I'm, uh, I've got the low frequency oscillator targeting some parameter, and then I use the macro knob the cycling envelope on amount to control the lfo rate all right and so for this first one uh, we're still in the two op fm and i've got the lfo targeting the timbre which is the uh, fm amount and uh, i'm going to play a specific chord and you'll hear what it sounds like <laughs> And so that uh, merging of the LFO rate with the overall sound, that is something that was very specifically chosen in the mod matrix. And so you're able to tune mod matrix settings while the uh, cycling envelope amount is all the way up, while the macro knob is all the way up. And so you can get effects like that. I have it for the G chord, but you can get it for whatever pitch you want just by changing the numbers in the mod matrix. I'll do that again. <laughs> So it gives a pretty dramatic sound. Got a couple more kind of like that. This one is using the LFO to target the fold parameter on the bass oscillator mode. And so it sounds like this. another similar one that is in unison mode. And so in each of these LFO ones, I'm using the knob to control both the pitch and the LFO rate simultaneously. And uh, so that's some fan out. We'll get to even more uh, parameters being controlled by the one knob. Now this next one uses the saw X oscillator and I've got things sort of reversed where that I have a fast LFO at the low pitches and it makes it sort of muddy And I'm just achieving this by using a negative value in the mod matrix so that as the uh, cycling envelope amount goes up, that the LFO rate goes down. And so a lot of this is about just grouping different parameters. And uh, so in this next one, I am going to be changing pitch and glide at the same time. And 
It's just to get an effect that sort of made sense to me, which is to have notes that are low be uh, more solid and choppy, and then uh, when you go up to higher pitches, then you get some glide to fill things in. If I do this uh, too slow, it doesn't really sound that good, but if you can try and either really slam it fast or sort of do a crossfade with the volume, then that kind of helps. So that's a pitch increase and uh, introduction of the slide as well. You have to kind of work to get that crossfade perfect. Okay, so everything that I've talked about up to this point has been something that you can kind of change on the deck here. So maybe the pitch with the pitch bend or the LFO rate with that knob or the glide with its knob. The next thing is going to be something that you really can't change from the interface of the microfreak. And this is what I was playing in the uh, introduction, and it sounds like this. And now what's going on with this one is that I've got the LFO targeting the pitch and the mod matrix, and I'm using these stepped LFOs. When I play that fifth, it's giving it high and then it's giving it low. But then when I change the cycling envelope amount, I'm targeting that node on the mod matrix and I'm increasing that pitch amount. So you've got a high note and a low note that transitions to a higher note or a lower note. And so I'll just play it again with that in mind. And so that's kind of a nice musical application for this sort of thing. All right, so before we get into the next one, as sort of an aside, I want to point out a relevant glitch in the Microfreak. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a note and then step through the different types of oscillators, okay? So I was able to walk through all of them forward and backward. Now, it turns out that when you're in paraphonic mode, though, and I'll just still hold a single note, doesn't matter. When I try to do that... It's gone. The note always drops out when you enter the modal synthesis mode Frequency. okay just dropped now i can be over here in the vocoder you don't even hear anything in the vocoder hold that got the note i can back up go to vocoder come back it's there in noise but as soon as i go into modal it's gone now you can start in modal and leave it in either direction. 
I don't understand it, but it's just going to matter because we're going to be using the cycling envelope to change the synthesis type in this next preset. And so that's why I'm going to stick with the monophonic mode. So let's just inspect the mod matrix. Uh, for the cycling envelope to pitch connection, I've got minus 54.2. Uh, so it's not going to be a precise uh, two octave change. And then over here, I've got a sine one uh, using the type knob as the target. And I've got 54.5 on that. Long story, but I actually uh, set the pitch to what I wanted for here, got them kind of mixed up, but then I liked the way that the pitch drift uh, turned out. So what is this going to do? Right now, the type that we're in is the Carplus Strong. So I chose that value of connection between the cycling envelope and the type knob to make it so that when I go from 0%, which has us in the Carplus Strong, that at 100%, it'll put us into the Saw X oscillator. And uh, I didn't really work with this sort of thing where you change the oscillator type. Turns out that it also takes whatever parameters we've set for the Carplus Strong and uses those parameters in the Saw X. So I'm gonna turn the reverb a little bit up for this and uh, let's give it a go. So that's the Carplus Strong, and I've got quite a bit of filtering on it. Okay, so just one more demo, and then we'll do another hands-on building of a preset. This next one, uh, I'm going to just do the following. So what's going on there? I've got uh, pitch being changed, and uh, so that's minus 25, so dropping an octave. I'm making the wave go down from where it's at, and then I'm uh, making the timbre go up, so it's low, it goes high, and then the same thing for the noise. So I've got the three synthesis parameters, one is up, the other two are down, and then those reverse as I change this knob. So it goes from this sound So this is a good example of fan out where I've got one control that's changing three different parameters on the synth.
All right, so the next patch that I want to look at, I call Morphalo, because uh, it's a combination of a, a vibrato and a tremolo that you can kind of morph in between back and forth. But I actually want to go through how you make that. So we're going to go over to the init, and uh, we're just going to start from scratch. So I'm going to leave it in monophonic mode. I'm going to bump the octave up one. And uh, then for the cycling envelope, I'm going to go to loop and zero, zero, and 10. So basically the macro mode. And then down here on the amplitude envelope, I'm going to set the attack to zero and the release to about one and a half seconds. And key thing, I'm going to set the sustain level to 50%. And that's going to be part of the way that we do the volume uh, variation. And uh, so then after that, the next thing is going to be to set up the LFO. I want it to be the triangular shape. And uh, I'm going to unsync it and set the timing to about 6 hertz. Now, that's fast enough to where the uh, I'm not going to worry about the retrig, but generally for this type of thing, you'd want to have the retrig on so that you have the same effect every time you hit a key. We won't worry about it now. What we're going to do next is go over here, and we're going to have the LFO do a couple of different things. The first one we're going to do is have it change the pitch. And so that's a connection from the LFO to pitch. And then I'm going to set that to value of 1. And so it's not going to be a big pitch change. So yeah, you can hear the vibrato there. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a sign 1 be the sustain. Okay, so I just held it down, wiggle the sustain knob. All right, and then for that one, all right, I'm going to come over here from LFO to what we just did. So this is LFO to sustain. And I'm going to change that to 0.1. And that's just sort of to put a placeholder value there so that we have a light there. That low of a value doesn't really make any impact on the sound. It just makes it easier to set up. So we've got LFO to pitch and LFO to sustain. Those are going to be our targets for the cycling envelope. And what I'm going to do is use um, assign 2 to go to the node over here between LFO and pitch. So I hold that button down and I scroll over to that node and let off. And so when I go back to that, it's going to say cycling envelope to LFO. And then that value I'm going to set to be minus one. All right. And so what that's going to mean is that when I turn up the cycling envelope, it's going to pull down that LFO value uh, to the pitch. So instead of one, instead of having a vibrato, it's going to pull it down to zero, no vibrato. Then the next thing that I'm going to add is a assignment between assign three and the other node that we made, which was between the LFO and the sustain. So I let off, and I'm going to set that to be a value of 40. This is basically going to bring in the tremolo as we turn up the macro knob. All right, so that's all the setup there is on that. Now I'm going to turn the reverb down just so we get more of a clear impression, and uh, we'll set the macro down. We get our vibrato. And then when we turn it up, we get our tremolo. Now, this is a real clear example of whether you want to do an A-B type of thing with this knob uh, method or whether you want to do some sort of morph because the vibrato is pretty extreme here. And the tremolo is quite extreme over here. But... When I set it halfway, you get a mixture that's pretty nice. So you can have vibrato with a little tremolo over here. 
or tremolo with a little vibrato over here. And so we basically built an effect for the microfreak using the low frequency oscillator, which you could certainly change that rate to be something other than six hertz, and using the cycling envelope to control the amounts. And think of that as sort of a module that we could apply to basically any other uh, oscillator type. And so then, last thing as sort of a bonus preset, since we're talking about effects, I recently made a preset on here that's sort of meant to simulate a delay. Uh, it sounds like this. Now, the illusion is sort of completed by having that reverb, but it's actually just a fading envelope, so I don't have any sustain. Got a fairly long envelope. And uh, then I'm using the LFO to move the cutoff filter back and forth so it makes the volume go up and down, gives a delay-like effect. Pretty nice. So it's super simple, but when I'm playing it, I almost forget that it's not a delay. So I feel like using the cycling envelope as sort of a makeshift macro knob on the Microfreak, it's actually kind of a nice tool to have in the toolkit, and uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. Now, on to the second thing that I was going to talk about, which has to do with the vocoder, and this is just going to take a minute. Uh, in the vocoder video that I did, I hooked different synths and stuff up to it, I hooked the Oak Coast up to it. But I've always wondered whether you could somehow hook the Microfreak back to itself, some sort of feedback arrangement. And, uh, you know, so the Microfreak becomes the synth that plays through the vocoder, if that makes sense. Now, uh, to do that, I used the typical, uh, this is TRRS uh, jack that goes into the headphone jack. And so that's got a mic input and a headphone output on there. And so that output is TRS. I've got to get all my letters straight. And then that's going to go into a Y cable that's also TRS. And so then this Y cable splits into two mono signals. So that's a TS and another TS. Now, I'm going to take one of the TSs and put it back into the mic. So the headphone jack on the Microfreak and some sort of mixer and this in between. Now, if you only have that, it's just sort of silent. You have to sort of stimulate the feedback loop. And to do that, I used the resonance on the Microfreaks filter. And so you turn the resonance way up, it makes that whistling sound. That sort of gets injected into that loop and you can play chords and stuff with it and that sort of thing. It's kind of cool, but uh, the, the problem that I had with it is that you have kind of a narrow window of where the, it either doesn't trigger the vocoder or uh, things get a little bit out of hand and you get like clipping and stuff like that. But you wouldn't want to hurt your microfreak. 
and you definitely wouldn't want to hurt your ears trying to do something like this. If you don't have another synth, I think you'd be better off probably playing something like noise from an AM radio through the vocoder than trying to do what I set up. So I'll just leave it at that. And to close this video out, I used the Volca Beats with the Micah Freak and the uh, Miami preset from the last video. Did some arpeggios and timbre variations. Put that with some clouds and footage of the sky. Thought it turned out pretty nice. Hope you enjoyed that. I appreciate everybody watching and I will see you in the next video.